Good day, everyone. This is June 25th, the Jail Zone production uh, users call. We have Michael Young, Jamie Rod, and myself, Antronig. If anyone else wants to join, feel free. Before we move forward, more than half of our subscribers, more than half our viewers are not subscribers. So please smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much. Uh, for today, I wrote a blog post over the weekend about my new home setup that I can show. It's almost native free BSD, with the exception of a Linux uh, switch and a Linux access point. Uh, and I've noticed some interesting things in NetGraph. Uh, when I was doing an I iPerf3 test, a lot of, uh, is it retries or is it, what's the retro stand for? Is, no, it's not retries. It does have a meaning, but I don't remember. And of course, there's the Euro 2024, France right. versus Poland at the moment. Yes. You're seeing RETR yes. in IPERF 3. Those are retries. Uh, uh, RETR in IPERF. Does that stand for a retry? It does. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, okay, well, I start, I'll start with the uh, NetGraph thing first, so it's it's much easier to show and, and everything else. Um, uh, I have no idea how to do this, though. Uh, maybe I should just use my screen and uh, do something like that, maybe. I don't think you can see my screen at the moment. I'll just do a live test. That, 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 should, that should just work as far as I can tell. Uh, here's, uh, where is my machine? Z. Oh, don't tell me I'm connected to the wrong Wi-Fi. No, I'm not. Thank God. Okay. Okay. So uh, here's what the output looks like. And I did that practically yesterday. And I'll just uh, go into my uh, jail, one of my jails, which I have no idea which one it is. Okay. And I know you can't see the screen at the moment. And I'll also go to my other jail. So these are, um, they are both on NetGraph, using NetGraph Buddy, I'll run a server, and in the other one, I'll run a client and do a NetGraph test. And I'll just wait a second or two to make sure that, it, okay, it's running. And I get pretty good speed, but I see a lot of retries. And I'll just copy it's and paste the output. Uh, yes, I'll just copy and paste the output as soon as it's done. Okay, okay it's done. Okay. Um, let's do that. Uh -huh. Copy here. I would do a, a paste. And then let's do, I think we have a font in here, right? Consolas, there we go. Okay, so this is what I'm getting. This is between two jails that are using NetGraph. The number of bitrate is, is not bad. It's like eight point, you know, something, which is not like, it's, it's way better than e -pair bridge. e -pair bridge, the most I can get is five to six. With NetGraph, it goes like eight to nine, sometimes even 10, but uh, it's usually around this range, around eight. And But the, the retries is what's bothering me. Uh, I have no idea why is this happening. Should we worry about this? That's, is this considered the that's bug? Extreme, that's extremely bad. Eight, okay. Eight, Eight, that that rate of retry, well, I guess it's two things okay. that are happening here. You, you are seeing high retry counts, which is driving the size of the congestion window down small. I'm watching your congestion window bounce between nine uh, 9K bytes and 143K bytes, mm -hmm. which means you're, you are experiencing packet loss. I see to an extreme extent. So there's something, what is this between? Two jails on a, yep. a NetGraph bridge yep. within the same host, it looks like. Yep, yes. Wow. So extremely low latency, basically only scheduling latency, um, but also no real hardware queues. Um. And probably no decent back pressure mechanism. So it probably just fills up the NetGraph. A what? This is using NetGraph. So yes. I gotta think about what we're, we, I mean, that's like, NetGraph is like LRO on steroids. Oh. Um, so that you actually can drop massive chunks of data on it on the interface 
Mm -hmm. at once and probably what's happening is so this goes through a bridge in the host right yes Wait, and by by a bridge a, i mean a net graph bridge so a net graph ng underscore uh bridge node not the if underscore bridge right driver. yes Yes, I, I guess I guess I can this just is, share my screen if 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 you want. This, this is all net graph. We're not talking net map here at all. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um. So what do we got? We got an ng. You got an ng tap. Um. Can you dump the dot file? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Great. I'll just make this oh, much bigger. Small. Thank you. There you go. Can you dump the netgraph configuration as dot uh, file and render that? ng ctl, I think. Uh, dot, right? Okay, we got yes. something. Okay. Yep. I'll just That's, do it this way. ng ctl dot. Uh, just write it to a file and then use uh, graphics to visualize it. Yeah, but uh, graph this the online i think that's a thing right because people <laughs> make such things okay yes it is okay uh, paste there you go so the okay. interesting part is to the left Where there you, you go so there's Thank a you. private bridge, link A, ether, to, this goes to the jail. And then there is link two, ether, this goes to the jail. And link zero, ether, ng host zero, this goes to the host. And you measured between the two jails? Yes, I did. So ng e phase goes to the ether hook into the link one hook of the ng bridge. Goes out to the link two hook into the ether hook of EE phase uh, again. Because the boxes are interfaces and the eight sided polygons are uh, named hooks, if I remember I correctly. Should I change the configuration and test something? Because I am using NetGraph Buddy, by the way. I'm not doing anything uh, manually. That I don't know if you can control the batching or queue depth. Uh, what you could do is you could try to uh, see if you can enable flow control. Total of 18 nodes. OK. How do I enable flow control? So uh, if it's done via the meet, it can either be done via media or sometimes via driver specific CTRs, which is. Okay, so let's do that. Um, if config, I think it's dash M for, uh, I forgot its name. If config dash M for where is the okay there we go ng host this is the features that it has and the capabilities okay yep mm, i don't think that i i i, I see flow i think control. it's a media op sometimes okay uh, just like duplex settings okay, uh, okay. but uh, that driver doesn't have them okay and let's go to one of the jails and uh, let's say i actually forgot the jail name I of great interest to me after you make a, a iperf run would be due to do an ng control get the statistics i can't remember the exact syntax i i want the ng bridge statistics to see if we're either getting memory fails or um uh would that be in that stat dash s no that's the whole stack no right? i i specifically want to know if the the n graph internally in the bridge node keeps some statistics uh -huh. and i want to know if the bridge node internally is having memory issues i see okay 
So I'm just going to assume how it works. Uh, so service, ng body status. This is very basic stuff that uh, um, uh, Daniel parses and prints them. I assume there is somewhere in the script there that I can use. Maybe let's see uh, service ng body so, extra um, commands. Yep. You you have to send it a get stats message. Yeah. Okay. You have, you have to do this with ng control. I don't think anybody's. Okay. There is no specific command for it, but it should be possible uh, to get a struct. Uh, that to is, code it, it. It's it's ng control status. Mm -hmm. the pass to the node. And um, that would be private? That's, I think, not status. The command is called get stats. Oh, you're right. You're right. It has I been mean... a while, but... Oops. Hmm. So, um, I think it's something like send. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see message? what you mean. Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, so it would be a... in, um, let's see, apropos, ap apropos net graph. If we're using a bridge, it would be ng bridge. Bridge. Yep, okay. And here they would have their hooks and the messages. Okay, that's so down a little more. Right there. Get stats. There you go. Okay, get stats. Okay. So this mm -hmm. is the one that we're looking for. So I would use it by doing um, ngctl uh, message, uh, message path. The path but is private, I think. And like this gets The problem stats. is this, I don't see any uh, drop counter there. Other than the loop drops, which is, is only is, is why a drop occurs is because it couldn't get memory for the output buffer. It's the Q length unlimited, except for memory uh, pressure. Yes, yes, I believe so. It's a stupid bridge. It's poorly implemented. Um. So, what about using VM step to look at the allocators? No, I, 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 this is the counter I want to know. I want to know if the bridge is having, if it's receiving enomem. 3A. I wonder if that would work. Unmatched. Oh, go to help. Okay. Send invalid argument. What? Isn't that the bridge? Yes. Should I need to remove that? No. What about that? No. NG bridge. Um, I might have missed something. Please tell me if I have. Get table, no. Hmm. Well, well D Daniel does it somehow, right? In his code. So it should be in here. User local Etsy. What are you looking for? How to send the message to I private. I think you you're you're trying to combine the wrong two pieces. You need to um you have to address the node. Okay. By name. So use an absolute name, uh, unless you always have basically a dedicated socket you start from to use relative paths. But if it has a name, then you can use it directly. And you don't address a hook, you address the whole node. Oh, okay. Okay. So it would be something like uh it sent the message and have to say where to send it. Okay, so it would be NGCTL message. Uh so would I send it to NG host or would I send it to private? No, to private the okay. bridge. So it would be private. Oh, but it could be that you had drop counters on the uh, NGE phase. Let's check. Invalid e argument. Sorry. I see. Uh, well, let's do that too. Uh, ng bridge. Or is the drop counter global? Maybe. Maybe it's just a property of any net graph uh, node. One for. So that there's no reason why the bridge should keep its own. Hmm. Should I be able to like send the? Uh, What's the bare minimum that I can do? Set conf, maybe get conf? Yeah, I'm guessing get, get conf. conf. Do get conf. 
get conf. Okay, function not implemented. How? What's what am I doing wrong in the syntax? Um, I don't right. think private colon is a proper path to a. No, it's not. I think. Um. Function not implemented. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's something else. Like, no, it's not a write. Not a connect. What's a list? So restate the goal, Daniel, to uh, drop uh, in the NG, comment. So really just listen. try without the colon. Try without the colon. Okay, so message private uh, get conf. No such file directory. Private colon. Function not implemented. Uh, try okay. a colon in the beginning to make it an absolute. Like this. Or is it, yeah, try. Invalid argument somehow. Maybe if I do um, a list. MSG, node no, path. No, What's the no. node path? No, private colon is, sounds right. So it, it does go at the end. So get conf not implemented. Is there a help in there? Command. <laughs> I was wondering if you can do help as a message. Uh, well, to Hope be fair, there, there is a Why free BSD. It, it should uh, you, um, fuck, I don't have anything running that NetGraph is. right now. Okay. Uh, there, is, there is a free BSD article about NetGraph, so it should be in here somewhere. Uh, NetGraph. Yes. No. Close enough. Uh, the other one. Well, the other one. We had another one. That had like, oh, there we go, GL networking. Oh. NGCTL, okay, name, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. Uh, oh, so like, like that, whatever that means. BR. You gotta be. Uh, oh, that's just connection, okay. How do you send uh, uh, a message in that case? I don't seem to see that. I don't think that I can see that one. Close enough, though. Uh, well, we're doing something right. And then there is a NetGraph-based GL networking in here, which, uh, yeah, is basically the same article. OK. OK. NG host link ether. No, 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 not, not what we are looking for, though, as far as I can tell. So OK, we have the name, and we do have an ID, apparently. Maybe I can use the ID to send the message. Would that even be a thing? Like 3A, it says exactly the same thing. Yeah. Or get stat. No, get, was it get stat? Get it stats counts. with an S get on it. Stats. It, it, ah, that's part of your problem. You're typing, yeah. It's, oh. It, it, oh, you have to provide a dummy argument. I don't think it's a dummy argument. It's a I different argument. Oh, it's based on the sockets. So like get stats on socket or like connect a port. Sorry, port on the, port on zero. The, it's got a there, you thing. there you go. Yep. Okay, so that's port zero, which I assume is the host. Mem failures. Yes. And then we have port one, which is memory failures three. Okay which is uh, this one to the jail. And then there is two, which is the other jail. There are memory failures. Yeah, but not very many. No. I think... Can you set a bandwidth target for uh, IPA3 over TCP? I think uh, you have more experience there, but sure, jail or list. Jail so if you do console. basically an iperf and tell the client to aim for five gig, then let's say seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. What? Yeah. Like that, and you also wanted oopsie. And uh, do please put both the client and server in verbose mode. Uh, verbose mode. Okay. Dash V, I assume? No. Dash I can't think v uppercase capital. V. Yes, you're right. Okay. If I run just like this, this is what I get. 
Whoa. Will we try so far? Oh, wait, that's that's not true because this is going over my physical switch. <laughs> that's why. Uh, I yeah, but, to... but the, the numbers there are zero retries and, and a max window. So you're actually being window limited. Yeah, yeah. No, th that was over the uh, that was over the um, uh, the, uh, the other interface. Yeah, uh, I'll just do it this way. Okay, go. Oops. The what? Well, oh, the other one. Yeah. Okay. There you go. This is going now over netgraph. Over a real network. Yeah, uh, there, there, there's a real network like uh, a physical network in the house, which is on the ePair interfaces. And there but, is the NetGraph interfaces, which is this one. But so the, did you, so there should be two jails. There are two jails. These are two different jails. Okay. Just asking because uh, the physical network shouldn't even come into play. No, no, no. In, in this case, it, it wouldn't, no. I can disable the physical network if you want. No, you would probably lock yourself out, right? <laughs> uh, I can I can disable it from the jails, not from the host. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but so um, did anything um, change? Let me check the main page of iperf three. Okay. And this has been indeed killing me because, like, I, I I don't know NetGraph so that well. The is uh, dash B. Mm -hmm. um, and then B. Okay. just try to set it to 5G. 5G, okay. Uh, On the uh, you can't set, I don't think you can set the bit rate for TCP. You, it says that it's only, you can Oh, there you go. And we are still seeing retries. Yes. Should I lower it even more? By one gig. There you go. Oh, it's much still lower. Seeing... Yeah, but at this point. Let's let's bring it down. Let's bring it to like a hundred yeah, M. You have to understand that any retries at all mm -hmm. are are going to cause the congestion window to stay small and you'll never get optimal bandwidth. I see. Yep. Um, I mean, even at 10 megabits a second, retries are going to be a... Ooh, what happened there? It barked. I just changed it to uh, 100... How did I change it to? I changed it to 100K. Yeah, but it went... It it, it ran for one second and then quit. Yeah, because uh, 100K was really there. For 100K. Why are we seeing retries at 10 megabits? I can only assume that it's filling up some buffer until it hits a limit every time again. Let me see your, what's your interface look like? Uh, in the you jail? Do, and I have okay. config on your interface inside the jail. Yes. Okay. If config, there you go. Uh, this is the one. MTU 1500 Ether Auto gig at full duplex. LV6. Is this a normal, like, NetGraph buddy setup that's causing, yeah. and we're seeing more retries on Ether yes. than, than on Ether? RC okay. conf grab ng buddy. There you go. Uh, and uh, the, the Daniel, do you get this on your machines? The retries? I don't know. I only did perform. I did only just did, did uh, sort of, you know, bits per second tests on uh, one lightweight machine and one heavy machine. Mm -hmm. And I saw things better and I claimed victory, but maybe that was premature. Um, can you try multiple concurrent connections? Uh, yeah, sure. So let's go back to here. Okay, uh, let's do that, I guess. I'm just gonna keep it at 1G and I'll do P2. Okay, so start. And if you now remove the limit? Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go.
And if you try something stupid like 16 connections? 16, sure. I mean, uh, the stupid. 16. 16, sure. So we're seeing more dropped, uh, oh, sorry, retried packets, but. And the still... final sum, is this the final sum? I guess so, yeah. Yep. 114,000. Just, just give me, just do a net stat dash little i. Net uh, uh, on the host or the jail? Uh, inside the jail. Dash, uh, capital I? Little i. Little i, okay. And now uh, with dash. No uh, error, no i, i errors, no i drops. No collision. What about on the host, on the bridge? And let me also do it on the, the server side. Okay. Net stat dash. I okay, there you go. Drops to zero. Yep, and I'll also run it on the host. Dash I. For some reason, it's taking a while. Okay, that's. You have a lot of interfaces. I have a lot of interfaces. Uh, let's do it that way. There you go. Uh, I assume we're gonna need to look for ng host. That's the one. No the packet drops. counts are so small. Uh, yeah. yeah, because there's no traffic going out from the jail. Oh, the host, it's, yeah. Uh, oh, it's yeah, only towards the host. Yeah. Okay. Even the jail's uh, default world probably still goes a different way, right? Sorry? Because you also have ePay interfaces. Yes, yes. I don't know so, if we're going to... Give me a... I guess a net stat dash yes. S and dash, dash M, okay. So dash N, no, sorry, oh. dash S, plus uh, TCP. These are the overall info. These are the connection requests. Is this on the host or in one of the jails? This is in the jail. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sorry? Shitloads are updating the RTT, so it's the RTT loop is not stable. The oh. two million segments updated the round trip time. So it's a bridge interface issue. Well, no, it's just a, but that's just not a good sign. Okay. Why we're... Could be that you found a bug in the whole way the buffering works then. <laughs> NGE face versus NGE. Yeah, none of these are going to be in. Well, IP4 layer will, might be have something in it, but I don't think so. IP4 is. It's down further. Keep going forward. Oh, no, it's right there. IP. Yeah. Little packets received. Those are all zeros. Packets for this host. Not forwardable. Can you yeah. search for Nothing. the word drop? Drop. Just for all occurrences. That's all I've got yeah. here. Uh, which does bring me to the question, if I do man ng bridge, is there a setting that we can change about this? Yeah. No. Max staleness, mean stable age, debug level, loop timeout, I guess. It's uh, the how long the app cache lives. Yeah. Get calm. Oh, the forward table entries. Then there is a reset. Causes yeah. the note to forget all hosts and unmute all links. Okay, fine. Uh, bridge get stats. These are the stats. Okay. Clear stats. Okay. Get clear stats. What does that even mean? Same as get stats, but also auto. Read stats and clear okay. in an atomic okay. transaction. Get so that table if you do that persistent. periodically, you're not uh, losing any counter values. Okay. Uh, does anyone know what this is? Uh, set persistent. This command says the persistent flag on the node and takes no arguments. I have no idea what that means. That's, um, that's very new to me. And also there is, of course, the uh, move host. That's, I guess it's an ARP. I have several ideas, but I'm not sure which one it is. Okay, got it. Uh, that's all I got from my experiment. And I would like to know why is that happening? Should that be considered an issue? I it's an issue. That's really bad. 
That's really bad. Okay. Okay. I can at best like um, start detracing the NG bridge and see what's like being hit with like various small, tiny amounts of packets and see what's happening and who's calling what and Um, get more information and send the PR. There's still a few commands you can run which could tell us more. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of them is VM start dash Z. Well, we didn't ever get netstat dash M. Yeah. And then, okay, sorry, netstat-m. This is on the server side of, okay, of the... I don't uh, know if the buffers would be accounted against the jails or if it's... So, because it is a VNet maybe, jail, so it should have also its own stack, I guess. Yes, but if the allocator counters are virtualized as well, I'm not sure. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Could be that you have to debug that on the house. Okay. I can do that too, of course. Yes. Let's start dash M on the host. Yep, that this is what it looks like. And if we come to uh let's start not let's start, sorry. Um yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, VM stat. Yeah, VM stat dash Z was it? Mm-hmm. And then gra- mm-hmm. if there you can should see something with net graph something. Net. Let's see. Debug net. No, 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 no. Net link. No. Net graph. Nothing that. Maybe then net graph items. Net graph data items. Nothing. Uppercase either. N. Oh, there we go. Net graph items. Okay, yeah. this is on the jail. I don't and know what the, the numbers mean. Third to last column is allocation failures. Oh, okay, I see. sorry. Yeah. The, fifth the fifth column sorry. is the fifth column. Is this million? Let's say uh, requests the net the. Last three columns are failure, sleep, and cross domain. And all of them are zero. Should I run it? Try to look at that on the host, not on the the host. Okay. That would be a VM stat dash Z grab net net graph. There we go. Okay. It looks like it's shared because it looks like the exact same numbers. I well, might be wrong, but I feel like, yeah, they are the exact same numbers. Right. Yeah. So it's not virtualized, yep. No, no, it's, it's, yeah, exact same numbers. So, yeah, there you go. Um, That's I all wonder, I've got. I, the one thing I spotted there was we've readjusted the art. So, how would I find? Um, Give me the next app minus S again and search in that forward for updated RTT. Now, don't do a graph. I want you to, because I want to see a couple of lines after that. 118 retransmission timeouts. Interesting. Not very many. Yeah, but this. I think we have to remember is that we are not measuring a real network. So the only latency we are about to see is just the FreeBSD scheduling of when the and the runtime of the code.
those versions on here. What version are you running? Okay, are you? Okay. Is everything in Swim? Because it's the installed version of the user and uh, yeah, everything in Swim. Nice. This is your laptop, right? You're going by the host name. So best you have a one gig physical interface, right? I think you are muted. Apologies, I totally forgot. Uh, yes, this is a laptop, not 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 the one that I'm sitting in front of because I'm on Mac OS. Uh, it's a pretty okay-ish machine. I guess CCTL H model, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty okay. capable. So something sky -like based. And the memory is pretty good. It's like twenty six or something. Yeah, um, twenty four. Yeah, twenty four. Uh, this is also maybe let's say DT malloc, netgraph, something. It might also be interesting. Um, comma, DT malloc one two. Net graph something, uh, something. That I think that's a valid detrace. No, that's not a valid detrace. How did that happen? Dt malloc empty net. Oh, don't need that. There you go. Okay. Uh, do it again. Let's see what else is. You can run a, a command while basically using jxec and so on, so that dtrace runs so that command is running. Okay. Well, nothing from dt malloc as far as I can tell. Yeah. So yeah, nothing from dt malloc. Okay. I assume that only happens during initiation or something. Uh, but yeah, a lot of things happening in there, like free item address hook. I have no idea what these are. I. Couldn't even up propose for them. Let me look into the uh, NetGraph virtual EPA driver modules. Okay. Um, okay, but if, if anyone has any other idea to debug a bit more before sending a PR, please let me know. Because if you're saying this is an issue, it's kind of sad. And if anyone else runs NetGraph, maybe, maybe it's uh, something specific to my machine. I don't know. Uh, actually, let me try something because this just came to my mind. How about if I remove the e pair interfaces from the i don't know if it's going to take an effect it technically shouldn't but what if i remove the e pair interfaces from the jails right yeah if config let's say this e pair device shouldn't change a thing but hey uh, why not minus vnet is that all i have to do i guess no v minus vnet and the jail name most probably there we go this should come back to the host come to papa okay and then we have that one. If config that minus vnet and the jail name, I'm guessing. There we go. Okay. Now they should not have any ePair interfaces anymore. Okay, good. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to run it again and see if something changes. You never know. Computer systems. Hey, wait, it's much lower? Or is it just my eye that's lying to me? You're still limited to one gig, I think. Uh, no, I did set the bitrate. Yes. Um, so it... that you're seeing less of them. Remove the bitrate limit and the retry counter will uh, increment faster. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So let's do that. And no, it's just basically much lower. It used to be in the thousands. What the hell? It used to be 8,000. Yes. Yes. What the hell? Uh, do you have any uh, PF or IPFW rules? Uh, I no. I usually don't run it in here. No, I don't. No, I don't. But just to be sure. No, I don't. What the hell? You remove the EPR interface and now NetGraph is starting to work properly. It could this just be a... that having less interfaces involved mm. means that you're saving a few dozen nanoseconds per packet, which could change the timing. So what, should I remove the just that you're, LO that interface? Now the race condition is different and you're doing some kind of, the ping-ponging is less bad or something. Very weird. Very weird. Very interesting, but yeah, still very weird. I do wonder if numbers are changed in D-Trace now. So I'm just going to run the exact and same thing and then do this again. The net graph uh, node functions are mostly static. That's annoying for D-Trace purposes. Control C. Uh, no, it's even larger now. Some things are even larger now. Like free item there and free item here. Is it my yeah, eye? You got, you, you, yeah. you got to be careful. All of this stuff is going to be based upon data rate. Hmm. And you, you, that test was run at two gigabits a second. For some you, reason. The, 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 you're running a constant time duration test, not a constant data load test. Got it. So try with multiple connections to uh, torture test it. Like there you eight go. Or so. um, and there well, you are. Like the, 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 the G bits make me happy, but then the retries makes me want to cry. Yeah. The only reason why you are still getting throughput is that you have effectively no latency. I see. Yeah, what's your ping time? Or actually, doesn't does. Uh, are you running iperf with dash v? I was, the v capital. Try a little v. Uh, the little v just printed the version. That's iperf three for you. Eighty yeah, microseconds. So that's all I've got for this uh, debugging session. Wondering if there's some kind of limit how much you get to NQ per whatever unit at a rock. If, if anyone has any other ideas, of course, I'm totally open for that. And um, yeah, this is my overall... Because if there was none... What did he, uh, wait, can you set, set the buffer size manual? I think W is the option for that. I think I can, yes. I don't know if you can set it on both ends. Uh, I don't remember how to do that. One sec. That's iperf. And that's also iperf. And that's the manual of iperf. And dash W is the window size. Okay. Uh, let's do a dash W. I don't know what should I set this to. 1M? Um, Try it. Oh, no, you're not. It, no, you forget playing with the window size. Okay. No, try to bump the length of the rights. To a megabyte. Uh, dash, uh, dash what? Dash a single letter L for length. Single letter L for length. 
that would be let's log file length there we go okay dash l one m should i remove the window size Yes, don't, yeah, don't. Yes, don't. Okay. You're not going to get any window size growth with freaking retries occurring at that rate. The only time you need to, well, yeah. Now try to go a lot lower. Try uh, 1,000 mm. without any unit. 1,000 like this? Yes, without any unit. Okay. Okay, while we are at it, on all relevant interfaces, what's the MTU? 1500. 1500. Everywhere, good. <sighs> There's no VLANs involved here, right? No, no, this is all on the same host. Yeah. Uh, can you set the uppercase N for no delay to disable Nagel's algorithm? Uh, 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 where? In iperf? Yes, in iperf. I don't uh, know if you have to do it on both sides. Uh, no, you, you don't ever have only to. Only the sender should server. have to worry about that. Uh, so, unless you, uh, so I don't know who, who has to do it for a reverse test, but for a forward test, it shouldn't matter what the server sets. What's the letter? Uh, Look for no delay in the main page. No delay. Dash capital N. Okay. okay. Your window size is terrible, given. Your window size can be absolutely fine to be, because you don't know what the RTT is at, at this speed. The problem is, is you're receiving retries, and so the window size can't... You know but how much be. it's fluctuating is terrible, depending on the tests. And when you have a multi-connection test, it was all over the place. The congestion window? Yeah. Yeah, yeah because to... each stream will have its own congestion window. Exactly, so it gets shut down, uh, shut down all the time. By all the retries. Which, given the problem we are observing, is kind of expected. Did you mess around with the congestion algorithm or did you just keep the default one? I didn't change anything here, no. It's cubic. Well, 14.0 should be cubic. Uh, yes, according to dash V capital, it is cubic. There's the MSS. It would be interesting then... to change that, see how they respond, but there that's more go. like you could just test the. By the way, I did version. not test this on any other free DSD version, only the, on this machine. Okay. So I don't have any data about that. Yeah. But my, my the part that I wanted to confirm is that this is an issue, which apparently it is. And mm -hmm. what should I look into, which apparently I need to get a lot more information of what's happening in the system and uh, maybe send a PR. I don't know who are the net graph maintainers these days, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, 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 I'll gladly work with them to make sure that this issue gets fixed. Uh, that's on this side of things. Uh, for the sake of the document, I'll just... Did the game finish? Who won? <laughs> okay, so here we have uh, this is indeed an issue. A PR should be sent with more details, such as uh, VM stat dash Z, net stat dash I, net stat dash S, net stat dash M. Did I miss anything? Some um, even if you can't um, debug it on your own, it would be valuable if you could on the, uh, upload a reproducer code. script Repro to set up a test environment so that whoever mm. debugs the kernel side of it doesn't have setup. to work hard to reproduce your setup. Body and G body. 
the top two jails with a remat. Um, uh, create two inter. No, create one ng bridge. Create two ng. What's it called? I keep forgetting its name. Honestly, uh, ng ctl list and ng e face. E face. Yeah. Is it the e face? Yes, it is. It's a net graph, isn't it? Interface. Yeah. Two. <laughs> ng but... e face has the e faces to the jails and the run i perf can you test yes sir while the i perf while the i perf is running can you do a net status dash capital t on um, the client i perf machine net stat dash, dash capital, capital t T. Yes, I can do that. It won't show you anything without an active socket going on. So mm -hmm. you need to do that while the iperf is running. So bump the timeout to 60 seconds or more because 10 seconds are not enough so that you can easily debug something else. Mm. Was it like dash capital T or something? A little T, I think. Why can't I find Lowercase T for timeout. T time, thank you. Okay. Oh, maybe I'm the, okay. This is what it looks like. Also, why is there two of them? Or like a child and a parent, I guess. What's Rex? Okay, that didn't gain us anything. It just shows me the retransmit. Uh, can you install the GNU watch command so that I have something to run it once a second or so? <laughs> uh, it, 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 it gained me absolutely nothing. That's. Yep. Why am I am I a bad timer, Jan? Is that what you're saying? No. I well, I guess it did gain us something. I know it's not caused. It's not the retransmits are not being caused by out of order receives. Okay. Oh. And what should? Uh, do that on the client side too. On the client side, okay. Uh, well, yes. the server. You were doing it on the client. It's. Uh yeah, I was doing it on the client. Yes. Yeah, do it on the other side. I want to see if it's getting out of order packets. Which it shouldn't be. This is all freaking if packets are getting yeah, reordered. They would be so confusing. Now wrap it in a while loop. Am I in the right machine? That's fine. It's fine. I just it's rough data. I hope yep. I'm in the right machine. Yeah. There is no... As you can see, no out of order receive. Uh, and well, yeah, so we yeah, don't have an Thinking about problem. it, there's nothing which should we order the queue within the system. Weird. But that's all I've got, basically. Plus mm -hmm. the graphing. What? Hmm? I I don't know. There's one thing you could try. You could try to uh, use UDP okay. and just blast, start blasting at different data rates and see uh, if you see the same packet drop without any TCP logic in between. Is that dash U capital? No. I think little lower U. case. Oh, little U, okay. Uh, you have to do it on the server and the client, I think. No, the server the server is completely automatic. Oh, yes, I perfect okay. gas. What the hell? The one megabit You're, works fine. Yeah, that's the that's default, the default B. UDP. Okay, yeah, you need to do the dash B for, and then give it like hundred m. The one gig, why not? 
And there's and make it verbose if it isn't already. No, je recap them. Yeah. On both sides. No, you don't need. So we have packet losses. Yeah, but they're three orders of magnitude in the dirt. And now go up to to five gigabit, and then so we have the occasional packet drop. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, and finally ten. Now do eight. You know, ten is also interesting point. Well, you're getting, we're not getting 10, but we're not seeing any loss. What happens if you try zero as bandwidth limit? Just zero G? Yeah. You're ju just zero, if that means unlimited or nothing. So yeah, we just remove the limit and we're not seeing drops except for the once in a while, which is completely insane. Yeah, why is TCP retrying? Are we corrupting a packet somehow? Oh, that would also explain. But we're, we're still seeing occasional drops with UDP. When... Are there uh, corruption counters in, the, in Netstat? For corrupted um, packets? Yeah. And this um, is the only type of bridge that we have, right? I guess the, the next order, actually, probably the next thing to do is actually go to the 10 gig TCP test that's causing the Buku retries. Actually, you, we can slow that down. It, you just do it at a gigabit, whatever it is that that um, gets this uh, small number. Yeah, slow it. Well, we're down it's to not small. Yeah, you get it, slow it down to a gigabit. Slow it down yes. to a gigabit, one G. Yeah, G, yeah. And do we get, okay, we're getting retries during that. Now we need to TCP capture that with TCP dump. Okay. So that would be a lot of traffic though, right? Oh no, yep. it's just like no, that's not a, a gigabit a second for 10 seconds is 10 gigabits of data. Yeah. That's why I had you slow it down. <laughs> it's yeah. like 1.5. And then, and then you want to run Wireshark on the captured file. Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean even you know, that hundred meg, really, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. and then you yeah. turn Wireshark and see if we can understand what. Why is TCP doing a retry? Is it getting a? And you want to do it on uh, both jails. And you want to do it on both jails? Yeah, of course. You want of to course. capture? Yeah, you want to capture on both sides, and uh, and capture all traffic on the interfaces, not just uh, that port, because potentially there's interesting ICMP traffic. Yes. And well, should I also no, try to figure out... Now. There's no ICMP traffic. What? There I potentially mean... is, in addition, oh, any nice. kind of error reporting we get could be in the form of ICMP. ICMP dump if we, if we were seeing 8,000 ICMP messages per second, we would have seen a rate limit message from the kernel. What's yes. the hyperport? 5201? This... Okay. Let's see if something comes back. That's it should not matter because there shouldn't be any, but if you use a capture filter, you potentially have lost the information if there was any. Yeah, but you uh, to get do it net stat dash s and then search down for ICMP. I don't think we're seeing any ICMP traffic at all. I don't expect it. I just want to make sure there is none. Well, there was none because I only filtered out the. Uh, uh, Did you what's... save the the cap the file to um, the pcap file on both ends? W. I want to say yeah. uh, capture GM length is unlimited. Zero. Yes. Dash s zero. That's mm -hmm. like a uh, muscle memory for me. Do you know how many times during a pen test I forgot that? And I'm, when I'm back home, I'm like, oh, my God, where are my packets? <laughs> and 
and I have to go to the goddamn bank again to do a pen test. <laughs> so it just became a muscle memory at this point. Okay, a dash n dash s zero dash i dash w. Let's do that. Let's run this. Let's wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's done. No, you're capturing only one side. Yes, that's fine. Just that's fine. And then just I'll do. And then I'll do. Let's see. Uh, TC just to make sure. TCP dump dash, or. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, jail. Okay, what's the size of it, by the way? 150, that's not big. Uh, TC makes me wonder. Copy it over. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't work. And use Wireshark to read it. <laughs> this of dash or you uh, want the pretty if you want to sit fine, you can uh, listen. Read link dash f user local jailer. Uh, Five something was it? Yes, five something. Root. There, there we go. Let's get that. Uh, uh, you want to do SCP? Uh, T four. What are you doing? What Jan said. Copying over the PCAP to the Mac so you can use Wireshark. Oh, okay. As a GUI, so that you can have things like follow connection. There's only one connection in there. <laughs> yes, but it uh, has good. And then from that window, you can Fuck. you can easily. Or there's a magnitude more complicated than it needed to be. Just TCP dump dash R P the PCAP file and give me the ASCII. <laughs> the ASCII, I think it's annoying when you want to. Okay, find... there you go. JLP cap. Most okay. of the That's... ASCII that I'm looking for show up pretty clearly in an in a, in an output. Okay, so we've got this. We have a CNC neck ACK. They sent a cookie. They did Param right. exchange. Scroll way down in this. Go go in the middle of the flow and let's see why we're doing retries. If you follow the connection, it should highlight those. It, it's a single connection, so like it should be like in red or something. Exactly, but then you can say follow connection, then you can say can jump to errors, like retries. No color difference, none at all. It's like as if it went all smoothly. Um, Come on, buddy, Daniel, you can if find you're something. If you're listening, I don't think it's ng hey. which has homework. It's uh, NetGraph in general, which needs to do. Homework. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, but there might be some tuning that we can figure out when it's needed and when it's not and under which conditions. This so. flow went without any errors at all. Yeah, and I had no filter on the interface. Also, like, I does this also happen when you're using... Neither do I. Which is... Um, what the hell? Antrenik, would you yes, feel sir. comfortable just compressing that file and then uh, sending it? Yes, absolutely. For me to look at... Uh, TMP tor. It's a flag so that we can uh, have uh, IPOF generate compressible data. Tor XVM. Huh? Or is it JLO? Doesn't IPOF do some kind of encoding so that it's not trivially compressible? Doesn't I don't know. Some kind of padding, or some content generation. No, there, there's some small. There should, there's some small amount of overhead data in each pipe. Repeating packet. payload is the flag I was looking for. The why? The flag I was looking for is repeating payload, so that we get a better compression ratio to share the peak cap file if we capture it again. Normally, it uh, intentionally uses a pattern which is not trivially yeah. compressible, so that things like VPN tunnels can't yeah. cheat. At 100 megabit, it's not too bad, but. Wrong length, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. Paste. I don't see what's happening at the top of my browser. Oh, there we go. Okay, copy, paste. Yep, that is the file. You don't. You didn't need to download the stupid. Anyways, uh, zoom. Can you just uh, put the link in chat? Chat here, and I'll also put Thank it you. in. 
here for future references? Oh, um, your app link is exactly as I, it's one hour to download for me from you. <laughs> it That's is why in my I house. wanted a compressible encoding. Yeah, it is in my house. I was yeah. afraid I was going to. You don't have to worry like about that. that. SCP GL TX uh, SRV zero dash. Uh, as if I remember, as if I remember, there's a server that's very fast from you, as far as I remember. Do I remember correctly? Yes, I do. Use a local jails. Uh, dub dub dub. User nope. Yes. User local, user local, dub, 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 Luria, somewhere in here, I guess, WD. There you go. Go, go, go. I mean, is iPerf bogusly reporting retries? I don't know. Again, either that or we have no, to capture no, on the other we, side to see the error. No, because we, we, we saw the re, we, we saw the retries in other counters. We saw them in netstat counters. Um, what we saw were not retries, but retransmits. So, if anything duplicates packets, that could also explain it. If we're never dropping packets but duplicating them instead. Wouldn't that also be counted as a retransmission? What do you know? Oh, just ignore me, by the way. I'm just doing something. Just tell us when you have a link. That's what I'm trying to do, yes. Uh, I think it would be this. For some way. reason, the download faster. just became a lot faster. Uh, is that the file? I guess, no, that's not the file. That's the file. OK. A few seconds ago, the download sped up enormously. I already have the whole archive. Uh, you mirror. Okay, and I think you want one in the chat as well. That's like in Amsterdam, so it should be like a couple of seconds. It's just that I have a direct link from my house to my data center in Amsterdam, so <laughs> so I don't have to wait. And my Mac is going to die. So that's pretty much it for the net graph stories. I mean, obviously it's not a net graph body issue, but clearly a net graph issue. And um, I, I have no more thoughts or ideas on how to debug this. If anyone else has any ideas, I'll, I'll put this into the PR sometime this week after I collect more information. And if you think there's a way to do better information gathering, please do also let me know because uh, net graph, it looks very promising, especially with net graph buddy. Uh, so um, yeah. the idea I have is to capture in both jails. Okay. Um, I think you can also configure a, a tap uh, or a trunk or whatever you want to call it on the netgraph bridge. Yep. Which is a, way, a hook which receives. A, I think it's just by creating a hook with a special name. And it gets a copy of all frames forwarded through the bridge. That uh, would be but, because there was something like that. Either echo, no. No. Frame, frame relay might be a good idea. It it relays all of the frames. No, to... the frame relay is an old uh, Cisco protocol. Um, it's not a Cisco protocol. It's a telco. Protocol. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. BP, there's also BPF. Maybe that would expose the data, I guess. No, BPF is uh, a way to run a BPF filter on packets. Oh, I see. To potentially rewrite them. Oh, I see. Actually, I think if he just 
does a TCP dump on the host interface to the bridge, he'll get the... We can test that. No, he won't. TCP dump. Because uh, NetGraph is, is, it's, yeah. is uh, hidden from the normal network stack. This is a NetGraph internal problem. You, it doesn't you get won't... a promiscuous mode message. Oh. What... Um. Okay, well, I'll, I'll figure that out. That's okay. And I'll figure that There's also pipe traffic manipulating that graph node. I don't know if that's the one, but I mean, there are a lot of things here. I'll just look into them and see what which one it is and uh, try to figure it out. And uh, uh, oh, maybe this one, that graph T node, it will just send everything again to another location, I guess. Yeah, you could do that, uh, but it would be boring. Huh. Snooping on a There's also the E2F, yeah. the EFA type filtering. Which one is that again? EFA type filtering. So if you want to split yeah. IPv4 and IPv6 oh, or something. And... and these are like, they, they're like FreeBSD 5. That was a long time ago. I wonder if yeah, they're being cleaned properly. NetGraph appeared in 4.2 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around the same time. The you, could try, you could change the bridge to a hub, and then you'd get then you'd get the packets out the host interface. Are, are we, <laughs> oh, so are we, oh, my God. That's... It's such, oh. But, yeah, for ah. three ports, you're right. Yeah, that's all that's, that's there. So that, would, that does exactly what we need. Yes. That is technically accurate, yes. And I don't know it's that... kind of accurate. I, I think the, the, the hub is actually a degenerate version of the bridge code. There's um, a NAT. There's a NAT in NetGraph? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. It does... Do people and even... It also this? uses uh, the same library in the kernel used by the normal IPFW NAT. Really? Code. So libalias, just like the NAT daemon in user space, we use the same, so it's a pretty capable uh, one as far as nothing goes. That's and pretty impressive. Even, which can be important for, uh, let's say, if you have to do some kind of VPN service via PPP uh, over whatever. Yeah, change it, have... change it to a hub. The hub code is really simple. Okay. Well, okay. Potentially a security. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you have to tell me how, because this is a new thing for me, you know? Uh, I assume I need to do ng. Oh, uh, so um, by the way, while reading the main page for the bridge driver, I found mm -hmm. the answer to your question what the uh, persistent um, flag does. Okay. Uh, if you see uh, at the end of the main page under shutdown, okay. Um, uh, normally, when the last hook disconnects, the uh, bridge shuts down. Okay. With persisting, you can keep it up. I see. Should even if there are no members. Okay, but uh, as far as I remember, NetGraph body always keeps a member. Ng body status. Yeah, there you go. Because there's ng host always. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. Okay. Um, okay. Oh my god, 200 gigs has have been transferred. <laughs> well, it's impressive. Nothing. Of course, it's nothing. Uh, okay, I'm, 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 I'm done with this part. Thank you all very much. I'll debug some more, capture more data, like Jan said, from both sides. I'll do also another one with a hub. I'll also play around with a T. The NGT also looks promising for like if, if I actually end up deploying yes. this in production, the T seems to be an important one. To see everything that's uh, happening. NGT yeah. could be used uh, to also just sniff basically connected in between the NGE phase and uh, the um, bridge. And then mm -hmm. you have basically a uh, way to tap into it. Nice. Nice. And then um, the special names for. So there is a uh, uplink number and then hmm. and there's the lower hook. So, so special uh, hook names 
which have meaning to the hooks uh, in uh, the bridge driver. So that was my news there. Um, I'll I'll dig into this because I I think jail jail people would would love to have netgraph in like way better. Which reminds me, France versus Poland. Mm. How did this even end? I, I would assume it would show like a live update, but hey, duck, duck, go. Why not, you know? One, one, that was today. Well, okay. One, one, okay. Um, here, I if anyone's interested, I did blog about FreeBSD native-ish home lab. Uh, it got a lot of views somehow in the last two days, like a couple of thousand, basically. And uh, everything is in here is practically FreeBSD, not very small amount of things are not free BSD. Um, maybe I should just show you this, which is um, an ISP router that goes into the switch, a uh, home server, which Jan just connected to, um, a home router, a quote unquote hypervisor, which is actually a, a laptop, the T480 S, a Raspberry Pi running free BSD as well, and the uh, Unify. So the Unify is Linux. Uh, and the switch is running Linux according to LLDP. Um, I'm loving the setup, and I, the, this this uh, home server also has an IPv6 tunnel, thanks to Hurricane Electric, and that tunnel is also forwarded to the router, and the router does Slack broadcasting into the home network. So that also so, works like a charm. Yes, Jan. Despite all of that, uh, you never explained what made you decide to you busy use VLANs to uh, split <laughs> your uh, jail. Sure. Here's the reason. Um, the reason is yeah. people come to my house, uh, which means I need to give them Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi that I have set up here is uh, also VPN to my company's headquarters. Uh, so mm -hmm. our data centers and everything. And of course, I didn't want to give access to that. Because like, they could easily... Your corporate IT people know that. I am the corporate yes, IT people. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that's why I made it that way. Uh, this is legacy because I, I I wanted everything to be on 5G and the old devices on 2G. And, and apparently no one's connected on the legacy version, which is, you know, 2.4. And this is for people who come to the house. So I did VLANing for that, uh, Jan. And also another reason for the jails to be on the different VLANs is... When unified devices connect, they try to do DHCP to get an IP, an IP address uh, on an untagged port, and then they need to reach their uh, uh, control manager, which is this thing that you're seeing, yep. also untagged. Unadapted unified access Exactly. Points. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, People it's sometimes... using the native yeah. VLAN. Yeah, which means you kind of have to have the unified management interface if you want uh, to be able to ever adopt. Uh, yes, at this point, if it loses its configuration, yes. that's why uh, here EM0, well, this is on the ThinkPad, has multiple VLANs the LAN VLAN, mm -hmm. so you know, for per personal purposes, and the management VLAN. And here I have a, a bridge uh, 42 where the VLAN interface is part of it, and also the jail that does the management. And if I do jailer uh, info a unify zero, I should see that the unified device is also up and running. Sorry, the, the unified jail is up and running. And if I do jailer console unify zero, inside of it, it's just the MongoDB stuff and the, where is that one? And the Java stuff for unify. So that's pretty okay. much it. Since you seem to be uh, hell bent on turning your home network into a full time job, <laughs> do you already know that uh, Unify access points support um, um, radius based VLANs? Yes, I'm so planning that you on don't implementing. Have to pollute the, your airtime with lots of SSIDs. Yes, I'm planning on doing that over this weekend. So, like, I would use <laughs> my company's LDAP to connect. To Wi Fi, don't. Why, why, why not? 
<laughs> it, it works fine, honestly. So I, I don't see any issue with it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th this is the overall setup. Uh, what's bothering me is, is the following. So uh, let's go to the router. Let's go to the home router, uh, EVN0, there we go. And here, when I'm setting up a VLANs or c.conf, right? It's pretty simple, VLANs on IGB2. Great, and then you just configure it. Okay, great. Now, uh, when it comes to here on the uh, on the ThinkPad, because I'm also creating bridge interfaces, Jan, what I did in the beginning is I had the add member inside of create orgs, okay? Which is the same way of doing it, right? You're creating the bridge 100, add the following blah, blah, blah into it, right? Yes, it didn't work sense. for some reason. For some reason, it didn't work. Probably uh, because of the order of processing. Yes, yes, exactly. So I ended up doing it this way. So like in the uh, what happens orgs... if you? Uh, uh -huh. So what you can do is you can. Uh, I think it should work if you list the interfaces, the VLAN interfaces, uh, in your cloned interfaces list. I see what you mean. Okay. That would make sense, but, I guess. Uh, beware of nesting bridges and VLANs. Yes. Uh, 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 on this setup, I have so no So the issues. funniest fuck up I've encountered with that, well, funny in retrospect, that is, is if you uh, create a bridge on top of a VLAN interface. If you create a and bridge. And then enable rapid spanning okay. tree uh -huh. inside the bridge. Uh, free and open BSD, the like will happily try to speak a uh, spanning tree inside of that frames, oh. which will uh, completely fuck up HPE switches. I see. As in, they will stop forwarding um, completely. Uh, oh, I on. see. Not even tell you about it. We will just stop at any port. Mm. Oh, another thing I noticed on the Intel EM interfaces, uh, it didn't like having RX checksum and TX checksum when doing VLANing. I disabled those and it just... What? Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, well, when I... You really don't want to disable the hardware accelerated checksum. That means your poor CPU has to look at every byte of every packet. I know. To just... Sum it up. I know, but if I had these enabled, the performance went went down, like really down. Like we're talking. Uh, uh, can you show me the EM flex? Yes. On an interface where you didn't do that. Okay, there you Another go. Another EM interface. So this is the EM zero interface. Uh, right now yep. it's disabled. Okay. Um, it looks like your real problem is the the LRO TSO. Wait, are they enabled? I don't see it. One sec. Oh, there we go. LRO. Yeah. Where's TSO? LRO, TSO, disable that crap. Make sure you also disable it for VLANs. VLAN hardware TSO. I VLAN. I don't see it. Sorry. Hardware check some VLAN. Hardware TSO. There we go. Okay. Let's try you, disable. Your LRO go. and TSO flex are your real problem. And I think I can disable them globally, right? If I do LRO, I should see that, I think. Uh, you may what? want to use it on other uh, hmm. interfaces, well, so I would do it on a per interface level. Minus LRO, there we go. Of course, it's going to disconnect and come back, I assume. OK. Yep. And then I would do uh, VLAN hardware TSO, am I right? I don't know if it's with a try the syntax. Bad value. Okay. If config. Yeah. Okay. So try. So I'll just do T. I'll just do TSO and see what it does. Okay. I think it didn't do anything. Okay. Yep. Maybe try without other... the underscore. Without the on. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, there we go. VLAN hardware TSO. Okay. So VLAN hardware TSO. It's going to go out and come back again, I assume. Come on, buddy, you can do this. OK, great. EM0, this is what I have What I have right now. Uh, OK. You already have it. Hmm. Should I enable back the uh, checksumming? Uh, check yes. Okay. Uh, Rx checksum, TX checksum. 
Let's enable that back. You will never disable the IPv6 checksumming. <laughs> no, I didn't know. No, I don't think this machine uses no. IPv6 that much. So yeah. Uh -huh. And it's in a tunnel, so anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's done. done. That's done. And now I'll go to another machine. Uh, I'll yep. be routing here. Make sure that this one is not doing that. IGB two one hundred. The other thing you really want to make IGB. sure if there's a bridge involved and VLANs is on that all of them have the same True. MTU. So here I should also disable TSO and LRO. Yes, okay. on all the uh, involved IGB interfaces. Two, uh, minus LRO. If there's any bridging involved, TSO. you have to disable. Let's see what that does. Come on, Quick I can draw the link to the blog article I wrote on that. <laughs> yeah, this was my land. So I, did you notice that I went and came back? No. Okay, well, I noticed. Okay. So, okay. There's also VLAN hardware TSO. Should I disable that too? Yes, disable okay. anything LRO TSO related. Okay, um, minus a VLAN hardware TSO. I, you might lose me again. We should try this. I'm just going to shout. Uh... And you're back. And I'm back. Okay, well, this works very you beautifully. You away for like three or four seconds. Okay, that's good. Okay, now let's do a speed test. I have no idea what I'm expecting, by the way, just, just to be clear about that. IPERF C 172. I think well, VM limited by uh, zero should work. Collection. Okay, so this is from my uh, laptop to my uh, router over the switch. That's not very fast unless you have I'm, a very low. I'm priority. assuming, because if I remember correctly, this is a thing. This should or might also have LRO or TSO on the EM interface. Uh, sorry, on the VLAN interfaces. Uh, let's see. IGB2100. Uh, there is checksumming, but there is no TSOing. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I assume I should have got like a couple of hundred more. As it depends far as I... on uh, what limitations you run into. Uh... Ah, I see. In theory, you should easily hit one gig uh, on good yes. hardware. Yes, I should. So it yes, should I just should. run at line rate yes. for this type of local. That would be a switch zero. benchmark. Uh, admin. But if you have a router on a stick or something, maybe that you it... take two round trips through the switch uh, or something to go from VLAN to VLAN, and then it could happen that you run into some kind of and then just exactly half if you take two round trips with the switch it, uh, on the same physical interface between different VLANs or something, then yeah, mm -hmm. you can or totally explain it because for 50 Although, or for wait. 40 times two would be good. I'm thinking of something. No, it's still just nope. things like this. Okay. I'll play around with that. But thank you. Now, because like with when 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 LRO TSO was enabled and checksumming was enabled. I was getting like less than a 10. Yep. Yeah. But now. If you drop um... the packet rate low enough, so the timing between packages grows enough, what happens is that LRO TSO gives up uh, because it is not allowed to introduce too much uh, jitter. Mm -hmm. So you have just a few microseconds between packets. Mm -hmm. LRO or TSO um, within a flow to reassemble them and yeah. I see. By the way, it's going up to 800 for some reason. Like it just, no. so, I'll just look into and the switch firmware so is Give it a bit more time maybe just and yeah. use dash V uppercase. Use dash V uppercase. There we go. So, yeah. so you can see no retrust here. <laughs> yeah, this is a normal networking. No retransmit, you know? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, but I'm pretty happy with this. It's fine, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's new Reno for some reason in here. That's weird. Is my switch running? Uh, so is my router on an older FreeBSD version? Yes, it is. Yep, that explains it. Yeah, because there was a lot of more improvement on the VLAN side of things as well in... Uh, in 14. Uh, uh, you, in your visualization, you used something that looked like an old APU board. Uh, 
Uh, yes, this machine is running on APU, their home router. Oh, okay. So Which it's not model of APU? Uh, whatever the CPU is. I think it's APU. Okay, that CPU could just run the benchmark and run top. Uh, it could just be CPU limited. Oh, okay. Because it's a really low performance CPU, not just low power. I see. <laughs> this hat, was it? Yeah, there we go. And... Uh, Maybe I should just do top. I understand that much better. And let's say yep. that I forgot to run the server. I perf three server. Okay. Which exact CPU model was it? Um, that yeah, one. But as you can see, you have one of your. Uh, yep. Four CPU cores was totally. Um, yep. Um. Just there we go. Sorry. The AMD GX, whatever this is. I'm just well, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, oh, HC. So let's TC whatever. Probably not much of a difference. It's yeah. It's so I'm a in... one point two gigahertz, <laughs> uh, and it's an old Bobcat. No, Puma, but basically, yeah. So yeah. it's basically a pile driver core. Uh, which you could think of as EMDs and NetBurst. Um, mm -hmm. So short pipeline stages, lots of pipeline stages, uh, low IPC, uh, optimized for high clock rates and small core size. Okay, so no, maybe not like NetBurst, but still it's, it's not uh, the fastest. Yeah. But to be uh, fair, I mean, uh, I, I'm not complaining because I know it's very old hardware. I mean, this has been used in like three other offices at startups yeah. when they were like new and they needed a temporary router and it just ended up here after my clients. So I'm I'm, I'm very happy with that. But yeah, I will be changing it to a proper, uh, better working machine uh, yeah, just for if, better performance. If you can uh, do all the... VLAN internal switching on a real switch mm -hmm. and don't expect much inter VLAN traffic, that thing can still have plenty of life in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the only, there is no inter VLAN traffic other than me opening the management interfaces for Unify and uh, the uh, HPE switch. And this is a pretty yeah, okay I mean, HPE switch. So uh, if you want to drop the uh, uh, Recording, we can maybe go into more detail <laughs> what you can do and what you really shouldn't do and what you. Oh, I'm fine with that. Uh, what What was really nice for me to see was this the LLDP. Uh, this was pretty good. Uh, on on live, this is all running on FreeBSD. I mean, this is the LLDP on the switch, and on FreeBSD, um, I just installed a package called. Um, uh, LLDP Tiny. LLDP Tiny. And here you just do a uh, LLDP CTL and you get the info. Mm -hmm. Like if I forget and then I, or like I don't have my diagram, I just like, oh, okay, I'm connected to port yep. number 16, you know, and this is pretty. Oh, what a modern kernel you're running. <laughs> I know, right? This is like Linux 365. I mean, yeah. I know, I know. It's, a, it's an old toy CPU. I think it's ARM 9 or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's yeah. Really for a home setup, it it's it it looks good. No. It's, it's not noisy at all. You know, it's like very small no. amount of noise. And uh, uh, then the the fact that I'm running practically everything on FreeBSD makes me even happier. I will probably move from Slack, which looks like this router advertisement daemon config, which looks like this. I might move to um, the HCPv6 just to see what the differences are. Uh, and um, specifically, specifically ISCs, the HCPv6. First of all, the DH, traditional DHCP servers, I think also the IPv6 support is end of life, so you should not start a new deployment on it. Oh, you mean just move to the Kia or whatever? Yeah, Kia, whatever. Yeah, okay, got your point. Yeah. And the the other question is, what do you want? Because uh, if you use EUI64 and Slack, you have a static uh, host part. 
Mm -hmm. And if you have a static prefix, then you have a static address. You can just change the MAC address Yeah. Uh, if you want to change uh, the part. Or you can use privacy addresses if you want to. Uh, yeah. With DHCP CD, you can also do basically per whatever uh, stable private addresses so that it changes once in a while and it whenever you switch your network, but not uh, in basically not during a few hours on the same network mm -hmm. so that it's not as annoying as traditional privacy addresses which change like every five minutes or so yeah um, and, and, and by okay. the way i was also running like a da um ipv6 only jail on this t4 ats and mm -hmm. um it worked all fine i mean uh it's it's really good. I'm um, I'm even thinking of integrating that as a feature in um, Jailer, where you would do mm -hmm. like dash four none dash six Slack, right? So like you would have an IPv6 only device. Why are why do you keep connecting to Jinx? How many times should I tell cluster admin that South Africa is really far away from Armenia? You should be moving us to Europe. Jesus. Um, my latest look at the, my latest blog article. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now I'm doing that, by the way, in the house. Yep. So uh, especially with package base, it's quite nice to fetch your base packages at 10 or 15 gigabits a second. I you currently use, use the one that's close to you, by the way? Yep. The I one use in Frankfurt. One and it normally, for big transfers, once the congestion window through it, normally fills up my home internet connection but that doesn't mean that it always ramps up because some packages are small and then it's annoying and why uh, put load on the um, project infrastructure when i want to run some mm -hmm. Gear up and down and just fetch five gigabytes of packages uh, <laughs> because I have to install some bloated crap. Uh, and every time I try my jail automation, I fetch all of that again. That's even at 250 megabits, that's annoyingly slow. And it's a bit um, borderline abusive to the project infrastructure to every few minutes fetch several gigabytes of packets. My uh, the, Michael's question was, how did you install Jailer over IPv6 if GitHub doesn't have IPv6? And of course, the answer to that is I have my Not own Git server. Not 6.4, DNS 6.4? No. <laughs> yeah, as far as yeah, I know, there is github.com. Yeah, of course, there's an IPv6. And IPv6.github.com. Uh, <laughs> IPv6.github.com. Okay, there you go. There isn't that, apparently. IPv6.github.com. Is it the exact same thing, by the way? Oh, just not available. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, but that's the host problem, I think. If you... Re it used to be that if you just resolve that name, uh, it works. Or if you oh put the IP God. address in ETC hosts. Oh, my God. Okay, well, I mean, uh, no, uh, uh, for my IPv6 only folks, I will be recommending to use um, git.bsd.am. Uh, or I might actually just put it in um, jailer.dev because jailer.dev, pink6 uh... jailer.dev does have an IPv6 address. So that might make even more sense. I do have IPv6 on it, right? Or you can your 464x net or your... Um... Yeah. Um, not 6.4 DNS 6.4 because it's just the TCP co connection. But yeah, 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 that's uh, all of that is pain. Yeah, no, this this the, I, I might recommend IPv6 people to just do like fetch jailer.dev slash jailer and get the tarball or whatever. And I think that would be a saner idea than, uh, yeah. Um, so you're saying your IPv6 is all under a static prefix from HE because your provider sucks? Yes. In that case, you can drop the VLANs and just uh, the ones not used to isolate the guest network and use routing instead and um, enjoy faster networking. 
because in FreeBSD, unless you have a very big routing table, your routing uh, code is faster than the bridge code. Oh yeah, I don't have bridging. I mean, on the on the router, there there are no bridges. Uh, there you go. There are no bridges, only VLANs. The bridging of the house is done over the HP. You know, on the jail host. Oh, on the jail host. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, that would make a lot you more sense. You could just allocate a slash 64 and then use a static firewall room. Yes. A single IPFW flow table can express the policy you need. Yes. <laughs> Jailer create help. Did I add the dash a non to not give it an IP address? I don't remember if new and not set... Then Jailer assigns the first what available when you address. Give it an empty string. An empty string. I think it would use the HCP. If if VNet, if VNet, it would use the HCP. Yeah. If you give it a, an argument, then the empty string. That's a bit counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I I think I think it has like um, an idea of what non is, but I'm not sure. Honestly, jailer lib uh, core apologies for the font size. Uh, somewhere around nope. Sanity what check. What about the co low contrast dark colors? <laughs> um, I usually code in the night, so that that's how I end up with. A uh, vnet, if not vnet, blah 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 blah. Inherit net graph. NetGraph is currently not supported yet. This is a different brand, uh, branch. Where is the none? You can't do none. I thought I've added this because I needed that. If address is empty, if address, yeah, I need to, I need to, when command tab is blinding, command tab. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I run too no, many applications. No, when you accidentally bring a white web browser tab to the foreground. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I admits of white light. <laughs> I thought I thought that I had uh, dash a none for like no networking, but apparently I'm wrong. Maybe it was in a different branch. I have no idea. I feel dumb at the moment because I feel like I should have implemented that a long time ago. Uh, just to be sure, jailer create dash d dash a none just empty does this create a jail named none i don't think so yeah exactly this one doesn't do oh wait no wait it does oh yeah it does oh yeah it does oh yeah no yeah okay i should i should fix this issue i should fix this issue okay well, uh, yeah, that's that's about my home lab. I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Um, a lot of people like the blog post because of like the whole setup process, specifically these things like how to do the static routing and like the IPv6 stuff. And I like this. We have like aliases as a thing in FreeBSD where you mm -hmm. can put all of your aliases down, you know, next to each other, and it will just work fine apparently. Um, instead of doing like alias one, alias two, sorry, alias zero, alias one, alias two. Yeah, there's that. Um, what else? Uh, Jailer got a lot of interest apparently from the blog post. And oh yeah, of course, I remembered. Uh, Dan, who is not here today, uh, we were talking about um, Samba and this is an accurate Samba configuration. Uh, on modern Samba, it works fine for Time Machine on Samba 419. This is running on FreeBSD on a Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigs of RAM. And it's working fine, to be honest. Not, not, I'm not having seen, I'm not seeing any issues, basically. So, yeah. Uh, Montrenic, do you have the matching ZFS configuration to go to Samba? Do I have the matching ZFS configuration? I did not do anything on the ZFS side of things. Or Pi 4. Oh. Yes, RPI 4, uh, no, free BSD. That's what the image is. As, and what I did is I did, um, I, I, uh, this, uh, so it is using a USB device for those who are wondering. Oh. Uh, I'm really sorry about that, but that's the best that I could do at the moment. Uh, this is the USB device, a terabyte uh, device. Inside of it, there's a partition. And from the partition, I have a status 
dash v. I have a uh, where is it? A um, ZFS, a ZFS um, a pool, and from the pool I have these basically, and this is where it's at. And the ZFS get all ZTM time machine. Um, I did not change anything. I thought that I should, because everyone told me that you're supposed to, specifically the ACL thing. ACL, no, not the ACL type. ACL inherit was supposed to be changed or something. Uh, that variable is deprecated as of 4.6 and 17. Um, yeah, so I, I, so I did I did not change anything and it all just worked fine without any issues. That's great to hear. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember awesome. I, I used to change Wait, this like a couple of years issues. ago. Have you actually restored from it? Yes. Nice. yes. Very good question. Yes, I did. No, yes, no, no. I'm really asking, not just to be mean, but uh Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I ended up doing nobody is nobody cares about backups. And most people care about restores. Yeah, I have a, I have a fat uh, MacBook, and I I booted a Mac VM on it, and I did a VM restore, and I pointed it to the um, uh, the time machine, and I it asked me for the password because it's an encrypted uh, backup. I put in the very long uh, uh, encryption key. And it's like, you know, pro pro processing, processing, processing. And then it said restoring. And like, I didn't touch a thing. And then it asked me uh, if I want to restore all of the users or the some of the users or the whole system. I chose whole system. It took a long time even on Ethernet. Oh, sorry. It took a long time on the Ethernet because I forgot that my Ethernet on the other fat MacBook was actually 100 megs. Uh, Ethernet device. I'm sorry, it, it wasn't the Thunderbolt, it was the USB one. But yeah, anyway, after a whole day or, or almost a day, it restored all fine. Like it was practically identical. I couldn't see any difference. Even when I fired up Firefox, uh, I was I was I was um, uh, watching a movie on one Firefox, and the other Firefox on my current system was like, oh, there's a new entry in your history. I'm like, no, it's not. It's just from the other machine. You just don't know it's the other machine. So it thought it's the same Firefox. But no, it was completely identical. Awesome. All worked fine. Uh, no issues there. Pretty happy with this. Um, so yeah. Uh, nothing else on my home lab side of things. And um, uh, totally recommend it. Uh, this is basically made with the idea of nonsense that what we were building in Michael's house. Uh, all of the services and the configuration. Um, I guess we don't have LLDP in Michael's house. Maybe I should enable that too and see if, if the switches support LLDP. Uh, other than that- You've got your own VPN set up? Sorry? The VPN is in there? Uh, there is a VPN case. in here, yes. There is Illuria Zero, which is my uh, corporate VPN that Rod was asking if my IT knows about that. And yes, the IT <laughs> said that they do know about that. <laughs> Yeah, this is also a weird WireGuard configuration because it actually does allow everything, which is not very common uh, for people to set it's up. It's very uh, common on point to point. Yes. And the way I make it work is I have a um, script. There's, there we go. Illuria zero routes that specifies which routes to add. So like currently, it's adding our corporate network, right? But if I want to go to a specific host over the VPN, I just add that host or network in here. And now it would forward all of that mm -hmm. traffic as well. So I don't have to, you know, play around with uh, why the triple double quotes. Why the triple double quote? I have no idea. I I That's I scripted the mob. Yeah, I scripted this in like uh uh I don't know, middle of the night, six in the morning, couple of years ago. Yeah, probably when I was even drunk, so <laughs> Vim. Okay, let's do that. You know what? Since you ask for it, well, we'll do it. So you're saying that this should work fine? Yes. Okay. This isn't Python. There are no dogs. <laughs> Good point. So yeah, this also works fine. And, well, and con maybe confirm it? Maybe Probably confirm it? Using some other kind of uh... service uh, wire guard restart would be the command. Okay, and it did Which execute. Why I got a CDT script? Are you using? <laughs> uh, I'm using the one that comes with this one. ATRC. No, 
user okay, local CRCD wireless. Yeah, uh, got quick. Yes, and if it worked fine, then RN grab Illuria zero should show me. There you go. It worked fine. Yes. The yeah. freebsd ish way to go about it. You could even use dev key to respond to interface up down events. And just to confirm that the tunnel is working. There you go. Okay. So yeah, these were my stories over the weekend. I'm I'm pretty happy about this. And uh thank you everyone for the debugging session, I guess. Michael said that this was the coolest debugging session ever. Ironically, we did not figure it out. So um yeah. Anything else from anyone? We haven't heard Jamie all day today. Nope, just been listening. Okay. Jamie, if you're still there, did you get any chance to look deeper into uh, uh, gel descriptors? No, so I have no YouTube been review. Busy on job stuff. Uh, aren't we all? Yep. Uh, Jamie, that does get, uh, get me into the question. Um, are you open to mentoring younglings, uh, Padawans? Because the university is starting to ask me about like, hey, students need to do their thesis and their diploma graduation thingies. Uh, of course, they all, every year they ask me if I have any projects in mind. So I thought maybe if there's a jail or freebie as oriented thing that you can mentor, I can do the hands-on yeah, stuff. But not at the moment. I'm going to be taking an extensive vacation in July. July. Uh, maybe once the school year starts up. I see. Because uh, that would be sometime around, I'm guessing, uh, October to start. And yeah. next year to finish before their graduation. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, hit me up about that. That could well work out. Okay. And if anyone else knows any free BSD projects in mind that... Uh, a graduate or an undergrad can do, please do let me know. Uh, the dean is very ha happy about our last open source projects. And he's like, hey, that was very, you know, good results. Can we do that again? What yeah. was that project? That project was writing NumPy uh, and Pandas, which are um, matrix calculation libraries written in Ooh. Python. And they do call a lot of Fortran. Uh, behind the scenes. We rewrote a lot of them in uh, Oberon using Norair's compiler, and we made it open source. And it worked uh, 180 times faster minimum oh. on the same data with the same calculations. So they were like very, very impressed with that. And like, it doesn't have all of the APIs of pandas and stuff, but it has like the bare minimum to get you to work so on. So you basically wrote a binding. Uh, it, no, it wasn't a binding. But all from no, no, it was from scratch. Everything was from scratch. So you you re-implemented the uh, basically blast level two and three algorithms. Yes, support. yes, and also um, the only thing that was like binding was the operating system level of stuff like open, close, read file, read line, blah blah blah. Everything else was completely done um, in the language itself. So yeah, it was pretty fast. And and it, it was cross-platform. So like, because I think, oops, I did something. OK. I have no idea what I did. Um, GitHub.com of the shops should be our repo. Yes. Oh, vShop Oberon. I, yeah, I remember I changed the repository lately. Uh, compiler. Uh, and the compiler works on, where's the image? We have an image somewhere in here about the compilation. Oh, there we go. These are all the platforms that it runs on. Basically, you know, it's like uh, Sigwin, FreeBSD, Fedora, Ubuntu, Windows, OpenBSD. Yeah, I, I did the porting myself of the code to OpenBSD, Raspbian, Windows, and a lot of, lot of platforms. Uh, even on like iOS, um, Android uses the um, uh, te te Termux. Do I remember that correctly? I haven't been using Android in a while. Her I think it was called it Termux. Would be a little change root environment. If I remember yes. Correctly. Yes. It works. It it compiles in there and works in there as well and everything. So yeah, uh, yeah. Long story short, it's a pretty portable compiler. Uh, I wish we had this in base. 
I mean, obviously the sea folks are not going to agree on a Wirdian language in base, but still, it it would have been a good got good. Lua. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty nice language. Lua is a bit of its own little quirky. <laughs> okay. Uh, if nothing Sierra. else, should we uh, close this? Sierra. Um. Sounds good. That was awesome. Yeah, very nice it debugging works. session. I learned a lot about TCP stuff. This was uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, well, NetGraph, which is the most like undoc underdocumented. Part yeah, of yeah, that's season. my so time. Please drop in your link to that online degrapher oh, and the command to dump to insert into it. You like had NetGraph is and she... extremely well documented. You just got to go read Elsher's and Cobb's papers when it was Paper, originally yes. introduced. I know. Well, some of us. Uh... It hasn't changed in thirty years. UTC. Jan, am I right? Is it seven zero five UTC right now, or am I not doing this right? You're doing it right. I'm doing it right. Next call would be around. Uh, let's see. I have too many personal things in my calendar. You can steal my MAC addresses, but not my calendar. Uh, that would be next week. Oh, that's like next I'll month. Yep. Tuesday, that's June. Okay. July the 2nd. Uh, zero two zero. I want to say 7, 2024. The rest is pretty much from before. I'll just leave it. Well, American friends might get confused. Zero two. Isn't that your oh, Independence Day? No, the 4th. No, that's the 4th of July. Okay, yeah. Too yeah. many fireworks. Okay. Um, uh, Drop in that online graph if you haven't, please, which I don't think is in the paper by Julian and company. Uh, what do you mean? You showed, oh, you had a window open, that thing. You just That thing, oh, dump. thank you. Yes, yeah. please show I'm the dump and then the link of where to paste it in, because that's very cool. And um, paper. You may have to convert that if it's an SVG or PDF. NG... Even just having, oh, no, I mean just dump. how to do it, just the, the, the syntax to dump it. And the site to go view yeah. it on, because that's faster than like installing uh, you, or something. You can just install graphics locally yeah, and I enjoy it. Just that it's faster than doing that. Just go to a website and blast it in. So, yeah, but the website may change, may do interesting things oh, with your yeah. well, then document stuff. them both. <laughs> uh, Is there a is graph is in the original paper or is that a separate blog post somewhere on earth where it doesn't exist? There you go. That's a very cool output, honestly. And with the yeah. link to generate it? Uh, no, 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 no. Yes, I think I can do something like this. Copy. Yes, thank you. Generated using inverted using okay. And maybe you mark oh, finally markdown. Thank you. They no finally kidding. added markdown. Cool. Well, I mean, nice. we're, we're, we're ditching them soon, but still. <laughs> Okay. Um, Andrew, when you have a chance, maybe fix those like VM stat with a lowercase v and ng control and all the stuff that that auto fixed for you. Yes. Yes. Thank because you, you know, things that were done. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, zero. How's the game going? The game was, was 1 1 for some Poland. One, okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, is that a new game going on? Who is it? Good news. Euro 2024, England versus Slow. How do you type that? Slovenia? Yeah, that looks good. And you can do 1900 UTC. That's what I've done in the other doc. Your call. <laughs> A personal touch. Very American. Not in Tina. 
Wait, that's 19. Oh. Okay, 1900. There we go. Zero nine. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. And for those who are listening, thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. We'll be meeting next week. And uh, also tomorrow for the open ZFS call and after tomorrow for the Beehive call. And after tomorrow, if you were just want to ping us and we'll be always online and having an online coffee with you. Thank you very much.